internet, my name is Lave, and I caught another film at the BFI London Film Festival. I watched Le Mans 66, which in America is called Ford v Ferrari, because I'm sure it's more marketable with that title. I do prefer the, the Le Mans 66 title. But anyway, this film is directed by James Mangold, the director of many movies from Copland, Walk the Line, The Wolverine and Logan. His latest is a sports biography drama following car designer Carol Shelby, played by Matt Damon, who gets hired by the Ford Motor Company to design and build a car that will challenge Ferrari at the 24-hour race in France. So he hires the help of his hothead friend but ace driver Ken Miles, played by Chris Christian Bale. So I'm not going to lie and pretend that I'm a racing aficionado. I, I do know of the Le Mans race. I also know that Ford, the company, did try to buy Ferrari in the 60s, which in this film they make much more of a personal thing between Enzo Ferrari and Henry Ford II Jr. I was also aware of, of Carroll Shelby, the car designer, but I didn't know anything about his best mate in this, Ken Miles, which I think added to my enjoyment of this film. It's their friendship that is the core of the movie. We meet Shelby at the end of his racing career. He's forced to retire for health reasons, but he still manages to live the races through his friend Ken. But now he's having to play devil's advocate with the people in suits who don't think that Ken is a right fit for their brand. And that's something I wasn't completely sold on, if I'm honest. I mean, the film does make it clear why they don't think he's right for their brand. It basically all boils down to Josh Lucas's character, who's totally playing up to type. We've we've seen him play this type of character before, the, the corporate guy in the suit who's a bit antagonistic. He just doesn't like Ken and doesn't want him to succeed. The film also makes it clear why because Christian Bale's Ken Miles is brash and opinionated for sure, but he's also right most of the time. He's clearly very good at what he does, and, he, and he's also a family man. For Christian Bale, this is actually quite a subdued and down-to-earth performance, which is also very poignant. He's got great chemistry and works well alongside Matt Damon's more measured Shelby. There's a mutual respect between the two from the off, but as the film progresses, they realise they are more alike than they first thought. They do have their ups and downs, though. The best way I can describe their relationship is like, they're brothers they they love each other but sometimes they they hate each other and let me tell you the sight of seeing jason bourne getting into fisticuffs with batman is is really really funny the film actually has a couple of moments which they kind of tease in the trailers which when you see it play out on the big screen like genuinely made me laugh the rest of the supporting cast do a really solid job too. You've got John Bernthal in a small role as Lee Iacocca, the guy initially trying to complete the buyout of Ferrari. He's actually the one who suggests to Tracy Letts's Henry Ford II that they should get into the race. Tracy Letts is, is fantastic as Henry Ford II. He's, he's mean and the big boss when he needs to be, but he's actually quite a, a petulant character when you get under the skin of him. He's fantastic in this film. I also thought thought that Katrina Balf and Noah Jupe were, were solid as, as Ken Miles' wife and son. And then of course you've got the other star of the film, the GT40 itself, which doesn't emerge fully formed and perfect from the start, so you get the nuts and bolts with montages as they refine and tune it and make it go faster, which will keep the petrol heads happy. And then you've got the racing sequences, which okay, it isn't doing anything new or unique, but it is really exciting and exhilarating. It's right up there amongst the very best racing movies. I was deliberately keeping an eye out for any CG work and I maybe caught a couple of frames where I thought, yeah, that car looked a little bit CG and I'm sure they must have done some, some background work with some of the, the crowds and all of that. But all in all, this feels like it was all filmed practically and it's fantastic. On top of that, the sound design, again, I saw this in Odie and Leicester Square in London, the sound design blew me away. It feels like you are in the car. You can hear the growl and the roar of the V8 engine. I've already told my dad about this film and we've agreed that we're going to go and see it in IMAX and I, I can't wait to see it again in IMAX. The racing sequences are exhilarating as it bounces from the driver's perspective to trackside and honestly it's worth the admission on that alone. I'm sure some of the character moments has been Hollywood eyes like there's a scene when Ken Miles is in the car with his wife 
wife and she's driving them along somewhere and she's a bit annoyed that he's not telling her what he's doing at night. He keeps disappearing to go and work on the car and he hasn't decided to, to go and join the team yet. And she has this like really overblown, like melodramatic moment. But then, then he tells her how much he's going to be earning. She's like, yeah, go for it. So that scene, yeah, just felt a bit melodramatic. But overall, I, I really cared about these characters and the story. And I found that the racing exhilarating. So it ticked all of the boxes for me. So that's my thoughts on Le Mans 66. And pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. I'm trying to think of the last racing film that I watched so that I can compare it and give you an idea of how much I enjoyed this one. And I think it was probably Ron Howard's Rush about Nicky Lauda and James Hunt. And, and honestly, I do think that this film is better. I don't think it's, it's perfect. I definitely think it could have been shorter. It does clock in at 2 hours 30 minutes minutes but then I think that is an analogy for the Le Mans race itself yes it's long but it's exciting and and I really enjoyed the ride but let me know what you thought if you've seen it and also let me know what your best racing film is ever let me know down in the comments and as always thanks very much for checking out this video I really do appreciate it if you can give it a like and don't forget to share the lave <laughs>